Tonight on The Roast, Clive Palmer announces a new political party, Queensland scientists use a cartoon to reduce worm infections in China, and the US ambassador pleads with Australians to stop downloading Game of Thrones. Well, I'll stop downloading it when you stop making it. Ball's in your court, America. Millionaire Clive Palmer has announced he will contest the next federal election and even run for Prime Minister with his newly founded United Australia Party, a party that was first newly founded in 1931 by Joseph Lyons, then dissolved in 1945, then re-newly founded yesterday, making it the perfect political party for the man who has no original ideas. Clive Palmer's dream of his own Jurassic Park is starting to take shape on the Sunshine Coast. Mr Palmer made the announcement last night on Late Line, telling Tony Jones... We need to take away the, the, the game from professional politicians. And it's about time. I've always said experience is what's wrong with Australian politics. What we need is millionaire amateurs who aren't too attached to anything. Well, I don't even think about my uh, interests, uh, Tony. Life's a journey. You only move through life. You don't, shouldn't be too attached to, to property. It's the experience that's just more important. Clive Palmer there, future minister for life, man. For more, Clark Richards joins us now from South Australia. Clark, with Clive Palmer announcing plans to nominate candidates for all 150 lower house seats, he's really just going to have to scrape the bottom of the barrel to get them filled in time. I hope so, because then you're looking at the next UAP representative for the seat of... Uh, the seat of... Uh, Stuart! Do you mean Sturt? I don't even think about place names, Tom. Life's a journey. Alright, Clark, so why run for the United Australia Party? Tom, I've always, since yesterday, admired Clive Palmer because the proud United Australia Party has always, since yesterday, believed in mining, Jurassic Parkism and Titanic Tunis. And it's that kind of ambitious thinking that I'm running on. Did you love the Titanic? Did you love Jurassic Park? Well, Clive Palmer is making both of those famous disasters a reality. Why don't we vote him in and see what other crazy shit he'll do? Clark Richards wants to get stranded in space. Clive could make that happen. Vote Clark Richards for Stuart and Clark's trip to space with Tom Hanks. Canberra. Clark for Stuart. Sturt. Clark for Sturt. And although Clive Palmer's decision to start his own political party might sound like the stupidest thing you've heard today, it does follow what I like to call the kooky Queenslander complex, where Queenslanders of all levels of kookiness start their own political parties. You see, you've got that guy in the hat, the girl without pants, and the guy that I'm really hoping has pants. Three kooky Queenslanders and three completely unelectable fringe parties. Now there must be something in the water up there and we all know it's not fluoride. But with Clive working so hard to hide the fact that he's a 10 year old kid disguised in a giant man's body trying to become the king of the dinosaurs, how will he find time to govern? If only we could see into the future. And we can! We cross now to me, Tom Glasson, 10 years in the future. Hello Tom. Hello Tom. Tom, in the future, how has Prime Minister Clive Palmer concentrated on so many projects at once? Oh, he hasn't Tom. The idea that one man could successfully complete so many projects is obscene. Since Clive took office, Titanic 2 sunk, his coal mines um, collapsed, uh, and he Tom? foolishly hired Wayne Knight to run uh, security on his Jurassic Park. The man's a retired actor Tom, not a security consultant. So is he a good Prime Minister in the future? Yeah, he's pretty good. He legalised same-sex marriage. Really? Between dinosaurs. Ah, well, baby steps, I guess. They told me this was a safe zone. Tom, you've got to stop Clive Palmer before it's too late. Oh, God. Ah, oh. Stop him! I always knew that's how I was going to die. Next up tonight, a children's cartoon developed by scientists in Queensland has been praised for causing a dramatic reduction in parasitic worm infections in China, maintaining Australia's bizarre recent record for internationally successful movies about shit. Now, parasitic worms currently infect a third of the world's population, so this 14-minute cartoon named The Magic Glasses aimed to educate young children on the importance of proper hygiene to stop their spread. Set in a kindergarten that doubles as a brutal Chinese prison, it tells the tale of a travelling doctor with floating eyebrows, who may or may not also be Raiden from Mortal Kombat. This doctor gives a young schoolboy a pair of magical glasses that enable him to see infectious worms inside the stomach of his friends. An image so terrifying it literally scares the shit out of everyone in town. But the cartoon worked, dramatically reducing the incidence of infections in children where it was shown. Though I can't help but think it would have gotten even better results if they'd just shown the kids a picture of what's actually inside them. <laughs> 
It has a face. Mark Humphreys, after the success of this cartoon, is it back to the lab for these scientific animators? Yeah, but they're not happy about it, Tom. With the success of this film, scientists had a taste of fame and glory, which means it's going to be tough going back to analysing data, configuring charts and extracting semen from frogs. OK, but that is important work. And the frogs do love it. But we need our scientists to save the Australian film industry. This cartoon was huge in China, a potential audience of a billion people. If we can use films to sell science to many adults, we should use science to sell Australian films to grown-up adults. You see, I've been trying to sell my script for years, but apparently no one's interested in when Mark met that free-spirited girl who listens to that indie music you like. But get this, a quick rejig, and now China's crawling all over my new treatment when Mark met bird flu. It's the inspiring tale of boy meets chicken. Boy doesn't wash hands, boy gets bird flu. Oh, that's sad. What, what happens to the bird flu? Oh, bird flu moves to Chicago and gets over it. And finally tonight, the US ambassador to Australia, Jeffrey Bleich, has blasted Australians for illegally downloading the HBO series Game of Thrones. Ambassador Bleich, pictured here in a photo so blurry I almost didn't bother to download it, issued the Facebook post on Tuesday, which of course was UN World Book and Copyright Day, but you already knew that. Ambassador Bleich began his post by stating, For those who aren't already fans, it is a great epic chronicling the devious machinations of rival noble houses fighting for supremacy. A plug for the show that was so tantalising, it doubtless sent thousands more Australians racing to their Googles to find out what he was talking about before also torrenting the crap out of it. Now, Mr Bleich went on to say that Australian fans were some of the worst offenders, with among the highest piracy rates of Game of Thrones in the world. Woo! We did it, Australia! We might have a small population, but when we put our minds to it, we can torrent at a world-class level. Now, the Ambassador's post ended with a call to arms, adding that Tyrion Lannister will thank you for it. Yay! I've always wanted the respect of a fictional dwarf. But look, piracy is of course a major problem, and one certainly not helped by the fact that our anti-piracy commercials are so generic they completely miss their target. What they really need to do is make one that appeals specifically to the fans of the show. You wouldn't steal a dragon. You wouldn't push a kid out of a window. You wouldn't f*** your sister. A Lannister always pays for his TV. Get it? We watch it too. We're cool. For more, we'll cross to Nick Richardson, who's live at the Australian Embassy in Washington. Nick, it seems a little strange that the US Ambassador felt the need to come out and speak up on behalf of a television show. Yeah, a bit too much lip from a guy whose jurisdiction begins and ends with state dinners, Tom. People love Game of Thrones. So much so, they can't wait the two hours it takes for Foxtel to air it. They want it now. Can you imagine that kind of craven lust for Australian shows? No, I could not. Exactly. I've been pleading with our ambassador to the US, Kim Beasley, to encourage Americans to pirate Australian shows. Our offsprings, our winners and losers. I know there's not a naked priestess who births a king-slaying smoke fetus in House Husbands, but you know what Game of Thrones doesn't have? Gary Sweet. If we can get them hooked on our shows, then maybe they'll buy them instead of just remaking them. Everybody wins. Yeah, it does sound like a lot of work, though. Yeah, it will be. Mr Beasley still thinks Pirate Bay is off the coast of Somalia. Well, I know where Pirate Bay is, because I'm torrenting Game of Thrones right now. So to Ambassador Bleich, I say, bring it on, America. I ain't scared of nothing. <laughs> ah, it has a face! <laughs>